Well, here we are again, Chris uh, Krabby's changing room chat this week, joined by the legend that is John Jeffrey to have a look ahead to the 1990 Calcutta Cup game. Um, John, how are you? Great. All good. Uh, being a farmer, we're used to self-isolation anyway, Al. So we're busy carving <laughs> and lambing. So it's, it's, it's all good fun. Look at these things. Imagine that, trying to carve with these. Oh, dear. I imagine, I imagine I try to catch a ball. I was going to say catch a ball. There's not many point in the right, way, the right direction. <laughs> No, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to this. It's a such an iconic game and such an iconic individual, JJ. But uh, is it, is this game the most asked about game in your career? Wherever you are, around the world, whatever point, is this game that most people would ask you around? Do you think? Oh, definitely, must say it. It's the only game anyone comes up. Well, actually, <laughs> a lie. There's two games. There was a set. There was a set another Scotland England game where there was a wee <laughs> incident in. Incident in Princess Street later on, which they talk about as well. <laughs> but uh, for, for uh, on the pitch stuff, it was definitely this game because the, the build up to it, you know, legendly it was it was all about Maggie Thatcher and the poll tax and all this sort of stuff, which is a load of garbage. But people thought that's what it was about. So, you know, at that point they just stopped the the, the home unions football fixtures. So yeah. at that point, the home unions all played against each other. So there was no. Bannockburn, no Culloden every year. And everyone said, well, follow the rugby. So they all came and followed the rugby. And so that's what it was built up as. It was all built up. It's the one chance we get to have a go. Maggie Thatcher, those English sods, the whole lot. So it was great in the, in the streets afterwards, in the streets in the lead up, the, the grannies, everybody. You, you, you knew, they knew exactly who you were and they were right behind you. And it was fever pitch leading up to that game. How, how much... Like, how much did you look into the team that was coming? How much did you know what you would expect from them or how much was it just about about you guys? Well, it's interesting, Al, because, you know, they were scoring tries with gay abandon. So you think we would say, right, let's keep it tight. Let's not let, don't leave them a chance. But we, we looked at them and said, let's just play as fast as we can. Absolutely everything. We've got up the tempo. I know that's normally Scotland's game plan, but this time it was double the tempo. Mm-hmm. If you got to line out, it didn't matter who you were, what numbers you're back. If you at first at line out, you, you went to number two in the line out and jumped. Mm-hmm. If it was in the back row, it didn't matter. It didn't have to be Chris Gray uh, or Del Boy. If it was Derek, myself, or Finley, you went to number two and you just went straight up and won the ball. And if you look at it, actually, the first line out in the game, and well, Finley did that. So we just had to, we had to up the tempo because we knew if we, if we let them settle into a game plan, they would probably blow us, blow us away. And was that a coach's decision or a senior player's decision? Both. I think, I think you've heard each over the years. We, we just yeah. uh, and uh, I think well, that won it for us, Mossy. But also, if you look at the rocking, if you look yeah. at the first the first penalty yeah. we got, everyone goes on about how Finlay took the ball on a tap from Gary instead of mm-hmm. you'd have thought we'd have kicked for a goal from there. But from no, Gary took quick the tap past to Finlay. Finlay, Finlay was actually very well tackled by Mickey yeah. Skinner. Yeah. yeah, you don't see it. But you, what you don't see is David Soule was the first person to come in. And if yeah. you look at his body position and see Creamy will still be salivating over it. It was just brilliant, perfect position. He's just driving him. And the rest of us just piled on in, won the penalty, and we got the three points. So it, it was just up the tempo, up the tempo the whole time. pre though, with Finn. It's quite an iconic moment. Like He takes yeah. it and he looks for all money as if he's going to go to deck. And then all of a sudden, you've got a, a rolling mole. Yeah, which... You know, goes to back to our hours and hours of Wednesday night and Sunday mornings, swearing at Creamy for making us get lower, get lower, get lower <laughs> with a stick and hitting you in the back of the head with a stick, get lower. And you look across and and Geach is doing kick, kicking for touch with the backs or something, and we are lying there with blood pouring out of our eyes. And Gascot's try was quite early on, wasn't it? That was a cracker, wasn't it? Uh, Thanks for that, Moshe. Yeah, sorry, it was great. Sorry. Try, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, no. uh, how, how did it affect you at the time? Because as a as a fan, I mean, it was a, it was a really good finish, and you're thinking, oh no, here we go. But it, it, did that rock you, or did it well, galvanise you? The, the, uh, it probably rocked us a wee bit. There was a wee bit of finger pointing because I know certainly I broke and I, I went I went blind to defend it, and they went open, and I think Derek came blind as well. So all of a sudden there was a gap on the open side, which they exploited really, really well. They picked yeah. it up. Uh, Teague went the wrong way. We yeah. somebody pick up that thing because we expect them to come the other way. Tied, tied chicken, move the ball. It was a classic. It was a good try, a really good yeah. try. Yeah. But it was badly defended by, certainly by Derek and myself. We, we, we got that one wrong. And there was a bit of finger pointing 
Who's the finger the pointer? Who, who in that squad <laughs> was the finger pointer? Oh, chick. You know that fine was chick. It's, it's, why, it's, why am I making that tackle? <laughs> I know, I know. It's never, never the standoff's fault. You should know that. No. Uh, I know. Why there? That wasn't me. It wasn't me. It was you. No, so, uh, but I think we got back behind the post and said, wait, wait, it's just one try. Let's just yeah. settle it. So obviously the... the um, the vic- well, we won't give it away, but I'm sure everybody knows by now that the victory <laughs> was assured. Never in doubt, 13-7 <laughs> victory. Uh, I assume there'll be pretty special celebrations, although I think in those days there was maybe two or three nights out in the lead-up to the game, so maybe you were all that tired, <laughs> you had to go home early. But it was, well, what were the celebrations like? And I assume on the Monday it was back to work. Uh, well, for some of us, mostly it was back to work on Sunday. On the Sunday? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, look, the, the, the celebrations were great, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but what actually made them a bit more special, because what happened to you in those days, you get back on the team bus, mm-hmm. uh, on the team bus, back to the hotel, and then you had a president's reception back at the Carl and Highland, uh, where if you lost, you got everything except champagne. If you won, you got champagne or whatever else. So we did that. Uh, and then you had your own president's reception, then you met the opposition and sat down for dinner. Now, over the years, the two years before that, they'd been terribly acrimonious dinners. They'd been terrible, bad feeling between them. But the summer before, eight of us had been in the Lions tour to Australia. So we knew all the English players. And actually, to be fair to the English players that night, they all came up, they swallowed their pride, said, well done, you won, you deserved it on the day, you deserved it. If we played you next week, we'd probably beat you, but you deserved it. So it was a really good na- it was a really good nature dinner. They were really That's good to us. Three or four of us got to fight to Gold Maker because sports scene was coming live from Gold Maker, do good only. So three or four of us went there, uh, then we came back and we dispersed Sunday morning, you dispersed straight away, as I say. Yeah. Most people back to work on Monday. I went back to work on Sunday. I back to the farm and back down the street in Kelso on the Monday morning. Why did you drop that ball? Why did you miss that tackle? <laughs> you know, you know, you're playing Galway this week. You've got more important things to do than that. Oh, you've, no? you've, um, you've no chance of beating Gala. <laughs> it's been it's genuinely been an absolute pleasure to, to have a look back at uh, some of your some of your memories from 1990. It was clearly a special time. I think it's going to be a, a great game on Friday night and we'll get a, a, a massive audience, no doubt, tuning in to, to relive the memories. Not only the memories you're sharing, but their own memories because it's one of those games that everybody remembers where they watched it or whether they were at the game. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Thanks a million, JJ. Absolutely. Cheers, really boys. Good. Good Thanks. Thanks, JJ. Right.